I was thinking about that because you're like, well, I can't find any of the fit. And he's like, do you know what Twitch allows? Okay. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Pedro died. Yeah. He's dead. Man, yeah. It, 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 it's back to some like old school Linux game cast. It used mm-hmm. once upon a time, once upon a time, it was the two of us. I was in my mama's basement. Just you were in your us. basement and then you, then you moved upstairs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Got a promotion, moved upstairs. I'm like, yeah, hey, that's the thing, dude. And like way back then you think like, this is one of the reasons, uh, oh, by the way, uh, shut realm dynamic, Jordan is live helping us form cocaine Voltron. Um, that, you know, when something goes like hella wrong, like these days, we're like, meh. Yeah. It's yeah. been there, done that. We started this like over Skype with you in the basement over Wi Fi. There, 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 there were at least two occasions where it's like, shit, we have to record the show again because this is completely unusable. We legitimately went through an entire show and shows this was before Steam came to Linux. So. This was before we were live streaming it too. So there was. True. I mean, there, there were seven games to play and. That yeah. and uh, variations of first-person shooters. Um, well, I mean, it's you, you can say they're different games, but they're all built on the Quake Three engine, so yeah, yeah. it's it's all Quake, all, it's a all bunch Quake, of Quake. All the time. bunch of Quake, uh, and the Cube engine, which is still around. But uh, one time, I this is when I was learning. It's like, how do I audio do the stuff? You know, it's seven years ago, and we went through an entire like 35, 40 minutes. To the next day, Jordan woke up to. Um, so I oh no we figured that out that night because I went to play yeah back no to we, the we, we 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 finished the show I was ready to check out and you're like we got to do this again and I'm like all right it's like, this was what? back when I had, this was back when I was like unemployed so that <laughs> it didn't matter how it's like well I, it only recorded me I was only recording one side of the it's like <laughs> damn it okay take two man. <laughs> this, this. I'm 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 a I'm a bit sad. There's no like iconic Microsoft Bob style text to speech thing under Linux, because like <laughs> yeah, just replace all my dialogue with that's a great point, Ven. We sh- we should do that with the show notes, point counterpoint, and um, then, oh, oh man, yeah, then we'll build a yeah, yeah. cabin. There, there. Do you ever? I, I guess you would have never played around with it. Do you ever realize that Microsoft Bob sounds exactly like Leonard Nimoy? No, he does. Does he sing he about sounds- hobbits? You can make him sing about hobbits. I just might have to take that up. So, sweetness, have you been up to do things since last week? Not really. No. The, the, I, I mean, there's like the 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 New Year's thing that I kind of slept through. Well, I, di- I didn't sleep through it. I um, I accidentally was awake through it. I hadn't intended to sleep through it. I ah, oh, that, that was like the old man moment. I, I thought I would be in bed, right? And yeah. Happy twenty twenties. Uh, but I was like. I think I was getting ready to go to bed, paying no attention to the time. Then the freedom crackers started going off. Mm. It's like, what? Blam, blam. I just got on my neighborhood up. I was like, I don't want to hear a word about explosions coming from my house all year. Yeah. I, 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 guess, I guess the most significant thing was I was on that Wednesday show because occasionally I do cover for people there. Yeah, man. Thanks for doing that. Covering no in. problem. We, had three yeah. people. we got through it. Uh, we blew through it. Uh, Outside of that, I think the only silly thing I've done is I've started playing Zen. Mm-hmm. Um, that's going to be a Friday thing. We'll go ahead and tell everyone that. Um, starting at 4.30 Eastern time, so i got a little bit of time. Except for the last Friday of the month, we're still going to be doing the FUBAR. But not until tonight, after I did the first episode last night. Uh, it's like, how long does it take to beat Half-Life? It's like, what did I sign up for? Which, I have no idea. I've never played Half-Life. We'll find out. Um... 2020 has it been good to the horse though i mean it's still it's still wearing the hat uh it still smells pretty bad though it probably needs to take a shower after an entire year of being unwashed it's the steam Linux. Oh, I we were gonna have like a silence for a moment Pedro. no i got <laughs> I, I was prepared of the week <laughs> of the All week right. we do have the steam awards ladies and gentlemen boys and girls presenting your winners and um we, 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 we don't have any we don't have any sponsorships from like Mountain Dew or Facebook or anything. No. I'm sad. That's, that's boo. So right. This is a thing Steam does every year, and well, Jordan, go ahead and break it to everyone. 
Yeah, there's 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 no Linux games on here. None at mm. all. Nope, nope, nope. I, I I checked. I scrolled through all of them. Nothing. Oh. Um, we we there 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 were some there. I think there was a game in the entire thing featured on Linux Gamecast because Pedro streamed my friend Pedro he through did. Proton. But th- to 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 that point though, I guess these days we can actually play some of these games because of Proton. Uh, some of them, anyways. Where do we land on that, man? Because I a uh, on behalf of the internet, how the hell did Day Z make the cut? Like us, we, we we were talking about that in the pre pre super shows and become a Patreon. Go go listen to that. Hey. Um, so like, uh, so we we were, I, I I said, well, what what was the competition? We got Risk of Rain two, which mm-hmm. I didn't play. Auto Chess, which fuck that. Age of Empires two, which you know would be fine in like two thousand when it came out. Uh, Ring of Elysium, which I have no idea what the fuck it is, and DayZ. So, out of all of them, like I guess DayZ wins by default? Question mark. I don't know, man. Uh, possibly. Now, the labor of love. I saw the internet get angry about like GTA Five being a labor of love. I'm like, but- well, what, what does he get? Warframe, Rainbow Six, Counter Strike, yeah. and Dota. So, like, I don't, I don't know. When I when I think labor of love, I would think something like uh, Cuphead or Owlboy or something that like is an actual labor of love. Like, there's there's um there's a story behind it. There there are some tumults in the development of the game or whatever. Jordan, it's a labor of love, baby. It, um, it's well, I mean, mut, li, mut, like my ex girlfriend believed, money equals love. Yes. No. <laughs> you she, love she, me. She, how, she, many, how many dollars? Yeah. No, she 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 didn't. Uh, but right. um, yeah. The um, but yeah. The uh, the I guess the idea is like these are games that are like they they come out in the previous years and people are still playing them. Mm. Rust is Rust is clearly not on the list. No. Um, dude. I didn't see, I mean, my friend Pedro was the only thing I saw. Uh, best game you suck at Mortal Kombat 11. I didn't know anyone actually played the game, but Plague Tale, I think we both were like, that looks kind of interesting. It does. It was like, I, I think it came up on the Game Awards and we're like, what the hell is this? Where, yeah. Why did we miss this? Oh, rats. Hmm. Um, yeah. I, uh, Disco Elysium, I heard some good things about uh, in terms of uh, story rich. Stuff. I've heard a lot of people talk about that, but that just does not look like my jam. So. I mean, yeah, but it's it's an RPG. Um, visual style, I can I can I can get behind Gree. Uh, I think I think it looks very pretty. Um, yeah, best game you suck at was a Hunt Code Code Vein. Code I don't Vein. know. An, an, anime Dark Souls. I, yeah, I want to play Code Vein. Uh, right after it's not sixty bucks, it's on yeah. my wish list. Yeah, I'm 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 a little sad. Baba yeah. got snubbed again for most innovative gameplay. When when Baba is wall, shit got real. You're just Man. like, oh, oh, dude, we're, we're doing this. Baba is straight up sausage roll level. And oh, uh, yeah, that does suck. But over a decade later, we have snapshots of Valve canceled Portal sequel F. Stop. Stop! Game. No, man. Uh, what is this on Eurogamer.net? All this is going to be in our show notes, man. Uh, it was eventually canned uh, when Valve went on to release Portal 2 in 2011. But they were thinking when they started making Portal 2, they're like, you know what? We're going to do this without portals. So we have this interesting new fancy game mechanic that's not portals. Looks no, like it's pictures. It's, it's it's Polaroids, yeah. So uh, based, based on the gameplay footage here, like you take pictures of things and then you can like place them and... Oh man, what them. happened? Did Nickelback pull out of the soundtrack? And like, damn it. Look at this crap! <laughs> That's my favorite one of those things where it just pulls up a graph and it just hangs there for five minutes. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you, you take pictures of things that lets you move them around. It seems like an interesting mechanic, um, but I can, I can totally see Valve canning this because like, you know, we iterated on this. We tried, we tried doing some stuff with it and either like the gameplay was not as good as we thought it was, or it's, it's, it's a better idea on paper than it is in execution. I can totally see that. I'm kind of thinking like maybe they couldn't dumb it down enough for the populace. Because there's really no way to screw up portals. You know, it either yeah, works spe- or it doesn't. speedy thing goes in, speedy thing goes out. But yeah. Valve's given, uh, what's the name of the uh, indie team? Uh, but they've given a... Camp, Camp, Campo Santo Alcum. or whatever? Possibly. Should have read mm-hmm. this order. Uh, House Lunch is working on... Yeah, House Lunch are the critters that took like the engineering design documents for this and they're re-implementing it. So like using that mechanic. 
So we're going to be able to Which, touch yeah. with it. I, I guess I guess we'll see if you can actually make a compelling game out of it. One thing I was thinking, I, me- I mentioned this in the pre piece of chosen as well, was like, I think it would be nice if, you know, in the spirit of open source, Valve's like, you know what? Here's a bunch of shit we determined is not going to work for us. Here's the source code. It's all done on source too, so you, you still got to download the SDK through us. But like, you know what? Hack away at it. I'm so 100% behind that, but I'm also the guy in the office going, yeah, just, just in case though, let's just hold on to it for one more year. I, yeah, I, I can understand it, but I'm sure there's like some like dead and buried shit in there, but you you never know. That no one knows where it's at at this point. Pretty much. It's, it's, it's on a flash drive in someone's desk. Hmm. It uh, might be something right. to play with, something to look at, but yeah, man, let's get into the uh, game I'm doing. The game. Yeah, uh, there's a, there's an update for uh, Superland. Um, yeah, so uh, apparently... Um, Despite the fact that it was like completely overlooked in early access, it has shipped its hundred thousandth unit, which is pretty great because it's a pretty fun game. And yeah, I can totally see how people would have overlooked this game. If you had just shown me a bunch of fucking screenshots from Superman, I'd be like, this is shit. Why would, why would I waste my time on it? Um, but that's not a slight against the game at all because it's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, so the apparently on the 2D list is we're going to get some DLC for it. Um, there's development ongoing for it. Um, there's also some thought, some, uh, ruminations on like, um, a co-op mode, which I thought was kind of interesting. He was basically saying, yeah, the game is designed for single player. There's no reason why we couldn't do co-op, but the, um, <laughs> super <land>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. It's well done, man. This is a one man army too, doing this. Yeah. So it, it, de- it definitely is. And th- yeah, this game, this game's pretty fucked too. It's it's great. Um it's got a good sense of humor behind it. It it def it definitely does. Um and that that's it. that seems to be a lot of the feedback too. It's being fairly well received. So good good on good on this guy. Mm-hmm. They they put they put together a pretty damn solid game. They uh, sh- do have a demo and it is available for Linux. It is. But the reason I think one of the reasons that we kind of like looked at it and we're like, wait a minute, what's because it's using Unreal Engine 4, and we do have a mm-hmm. morbid curiosity. As to whether or not a developer can make that playable under Linux, because it's not a very smooth. Um... I mean, there there were some technical hip- hiccups I remember, but it, for the most part, it was fine. Well, he was saying he's like, man, yeah, it it's not very performant right now. Uh, it ran better in Proton using DXVK at the time, so mm-hmm. it's good to see. But we need to talk about man titties. Man, man titties. Man day some titties. <sighs> Fine. Savage. All right. Damn it. Come back. Mmm. Mm. That 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 doesn't that, look that, like spread. That no, that's some Ricardo Montalban Rathicon and man <laughs> cleavage. Dude. Man, like I'm expecting Pat or not Patrick Stewart, fucking yes, Clem Shatner. Patrick to, Stewart, yes. No. Patrick Stewart I like to come it. out and scream, Con <laughs> or be like, Con. 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 Come on up. Um yeah um so yeah so th- it's it's a it's a side scroll it looks like it looks like a straight up amiga game like it does mm. like the 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 animations the whole <laughs> the clipping through the floor yeah this is this is an amiga game even even foxy like chimes in you can do that if you're a patreon you yeah. can go in the show notes and be like yeah i wouldn't be surprised if this is running in an amiga emulator I don't know. They say it's fueled by rage. The savage plunges into battle, wielding his huge ass. Oh, so, so it's, it's on. It's on what ID Tech Five. Clearly, yeah, right. Thirty-five percent um, off, man. But uh, what, what oh, you know? I, 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 I don't know though. It's it's a gig in size, apparently. That raises more questions than it answers. Right? Uh, how does it have like a, <laughs> There's some dense ass pixels? You can zoom in. <laughs> Gigapixels, Ben. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna be 100 percent honest. The only reason I threw it in is like, them some big old man titties. Yeah. Oh, just trying to make you a little jelly, man. Uh, let's keep the pixel train going. Yeah. Uh, in more. in Inferno is is a, it's an isometric shooter uh, with oh my god online co op. Are you kidding me? What? Yep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's it's an isometric shooter. You run around a post-apocalyptic, procedurally generated landscape, and you can do it with the friend. Although, I I really hope that they got some more enemies other than, like, green booger and yellow booger. What does, would you play, like, as the friend, the the floor? 
Maybe, maybe maybe you play what 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 is this that that Ghostbusters game where it's like yeah you play as the you play as the character that makes life difficult for the main character yeah all right I'm done with it um, yeah yeah to that point man I, I think you only get green blob and orange blob thing you know you you you're, you're saying you're saying there's like a bumpy wiggle thing I don't bumpy know bumpy wiggle thing right here man on the right side. See, we got the main guy. We got green blob on the left. Bumpy wiggle thing on the yeah, right. Yeah, okay, okay. That, that, to me, that's orange booger. Okay. Yeah, okay. We, we had our terminology. Uh, yeah. Ter- Linux a just bit of a ter- two gigs, 400 megs. At least this one's not a gig to download. Yeah, at least this one's smaller than freaking <laughs> Savage. Jesus. Um, Hound him about Vulcan support. Be like, hey, man. I got support Savage for the guys? Nintendo yeah. power pad. Hmm. Oh man, could you could you imagine someone porting Vulcan to like the Commodore? That'd be ridiculous. Come on, baby. Live a little, right? Right. Mm. Danger so, Gazers. Yep. This does look like a real game though. Yeah, th- 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 this sounds like a cutesy nickname for like someone who like stalks women. He's a danger gazer. I don't know. No, it's all that one moron friend from childhood that stared at the sun. Danger Gaze. Don't don't, don't talk about the president like that. Bad Chris. Um yeah, uh, so it's it's another self-described post-apocalyptic <laughs> shooter, which also happens to be it's roguelike. Starting Shock. 2020 off, right, baby? We're just like, yay, yeah. fun, enjoy, uh, post-apocalyptic. The, 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 this one, this one uh, apparently leans a bit more into the random nature, because there's, like, random events. All the gear is random. All the monsters and bosses are random. There's, um, it, it, it too, has multiplayer, but it fails in the sense that it's not online. You gotta use the Steam remote play if you want to play with your friends. Have you been seeing that a lot? I've noticed that a lot of games have uh, put that little advertisement down in the bottom right hand corner, and it's like that's a bold claim. You probably shouldn't just go I don't, out and. Go so ahead. I don't. I don't think it's that. I think if I think if the if like Steam figures out that it's a local co op game, mm-hmm. it'll pop that up independently. Mm. Valve, that's a bold damn claim. I, because you know we tried it with the uh, Ghost game. Like two weeks. We tried, we tried with the ghost game. It worked reasonably well with Death Road. Okay. Um, yes. Yes. Um, on my end, when I was connecting to you, I mean, as they, uh, it was playable if you squinted, because it really did turn like uh, directional, and it could have been the game too. It was more like a suggestion stick. Yeah, Megabyte Punch works reasonably well as okay. well. I got like San- Sandy didn't have any problems, but that that game has its own problem in that like. It implements its own controller subsystem that doesn't hook in well to Steam input. Uh, ew. Yeah. Hmm. Have they? But here's one thing: they need to stop the full screen mode. Oh yeah, the mm-hmm. the full screen and blast you with audio. That I, actually I, I, go, go I, back I, I, and watch our um, Death Road to Canada. Yeah, when we were initially <laughs> testing it because I made a like a minute long supercut of you in like genuine pain, I'm like ah. Snatching off headphones. It was adorable. I loved making that. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, my ears are still ringing from it. What? Fortun- what? Fortunately, like less than a week later, there was an update from Valve. I'm like, we fixed that issue, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, Yay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a little sad I didn't think to like get like some fake blood and put it in my ears so that like I turn around and I'm just like, yeah, I'm walking through my headphones. <laughs> great. Uh, man. Hey, man. Um, I like hand drawn stuff. I love stuff that's really fancy. Um, labor of love, and this this really genuinely kind of looks like that. It's Tiny Thor from Asylum Square. It's the oh, uh, how do I say the M word? Mjolnir. Mjolnir, and 16-bit retro-inspired action platformer by Chris. How do I say the H word? Hulsbeck. Hulsbeck. That's brilliant. Um, dude, I mean, this legit looks like some Hellboy level graphics. It, yeah, it it, de- it definitely has the the Genesis vibe going for it, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, right. Um, like, yeah, I looked at that, and like, I think Rocket Knight is the best direct comparison I can make. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, um, but yeah, it's 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 a you know a classic sort of Genesis style sti- side scroller. Um, I I do wonder though if you can get an achievement for going through the entire game without shouting Tiny Thor like Tiny Rick, Tiny Rick. Oh, dude! Um, play- oh, dude! Uh, Forty megs, huh? It's l- legit. That's that's legit hipster pixels, dude. <laughs> not not a gig for Savage, because we have man. to we have to we have to ship our Amiga runtime. Uh, uh, it's coming soon. I'm gonna buy that out of just if you can make that in forty megs, dude. You you are somewhere. You're tapping some assembly. Um, yeah, yeah. 
That's um, I, I I will say though, I'm very offended that <laughs> Thor is blonde to this. Bring back Ginger Thor. Hashtag bring back Ginger Thor. He's a ginger. A ginger Thor. Yeah, Thor, Thor was originally described as having red hair and a red beard. That, that that's why we did take two. Bzz, all right, let's get it. All Come right. On. Another world. It's thing. It's a weird jellyfish that handles marriage crisis with, <laughs> with alcohol, <laughs> drugs, sex, blows, and lots of odd characters. You just could. I'm just going to buy this on that description. I'm sorry. I, I know the game's probably going to be is this memes, but you know to quote Jim Sterling. But then again, this this could be one of those like jacked up gems. Yeah, it's it's supposed to, it's supposed to be a boss rush too. So like. The in, the in between segments are like talky and problem solvy, and then apparently most of the most of the combat is just boss fights. Which I don't I don't know where where do you land on boss rush games? You know I don't necessarily mind them. I see I I don't have like uh, internet or like learned hatred towards genres outside of like the only thing you can do for a game to make me dislike it and not be like hey I'll try it out is to give me like an extra dose of cards and an extra dose of RNG. Mm. If it's skill yeah. based, I can probably play it no matter what it is. Mm. You know, shit happens. Gameplay. Shit, ha- shit happens. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I don't know, man. I, I think I'm down with this. I'm, I'm this is gonna be. Yeah, the, the the description definitely does a good job of piquing your interest. You're like, go on, right, dude. Um, 100. percent Do we have? Is that the end of it for? Uh, we no, we, 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 we got, got one more. more. We got not Fortnite. Damn it. All right, fine. Eternia Adventures, dive into the not Fortnite, defend your not Fortniteifications, and um, discover amazing not Fortnite secrets. Uh, it's going to come out on the end of uh, 2019, early access, and it's not out, but it's an MMO. So. Uh, well, I mean, according to Pedro, the decade isn't over until 2021, so oh, still have time. We need that well, actually. Oh. <laughs> X- Hell, even fucking XKCD made a comic about that, too. Nice. Uh, it was like, the, 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 ra- the rationale was like, I Can't Touch This was released in 1990, mm-hmm. and VH1's I Love the 90s has MC Hammers, You Can't Touch It in there, so that's, that's all the proof you need. Whatever happened to the um, Crazy Justice? Remember that? Didn't it die? You know, this is a fair question. That was on Double Fine's uh, crowdfunding thing. Yeah. They set up, and there was a game that was like, we, we're joking about, you know, this Fortnite. This has some of the Fortnite mechanics into it. I brought it up because, hey, man, it's the end of 2019. Where's the early access? Hasn't dropped yet. Maybe it's coming. Wish them best luck. But with Crazy Justice, it was like somebody's going to call a lawyer at some point. Similar yeah. to, I mean, it had the same art style, roughly the same mechanics. More importantly, it had a Linux port. Yeah. It was re- there was a Linux beta released to people who backed it on. I think kick, oh not that uh, mill uh, fig fig yes fruit and uh, Arthurian had a copy of it, but yeah they they just like poof smoke bomb, but they haven't pulled it from Steam. It's still, it's still <laughs> it's, well, it, it was a better love story than that other battle royale that was on Linux that just like you got into the starting area and then it crashed. Which one was that? Ah, uh, we we tried we tried playing it in the after show one time. Oh, I'm that, sp- I'm completely spacing yeah, on the name. That I think they canceled that game though. Oh, that yeah, that 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 one that one straight up got murked. Um, <laughs> it yeah, wasn't just the, us; it was everyone that was trying to play it. It was just yeah. like a nope cascade. Yeah. Well, well I mean, go, going back to Elteria Adventures, I mean, I guess the, this this one tries to do like a bit of a more Eve Online approach. The calling. In this, Thank you, Michael. The call, the calling, yeah. Um, this one does, tries to do a little bit of an Eve Online approach, where like part of the game is like building the infrastructure, uh, which is basically just a way of the designer saying we're not going to make any content for this game. You have to make the content. But Yay. do we need another MMO? We already have Reginum, <laughs> or uh, what was it? Uh, Camelot Online. It's, is that an MMO? Yeah, mm-hmm. we we threw chairs at it even. Um, <laughs> okay. It was. It wasn't like Camelot Online. It was some Arthurian myth thing. I don't. Mm. I don't know. Like, I, if you're gonna make an MMO, the 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 elephant in the room is WoW, right? You're, it's inevitably gonna be compared to WoW. Uh, WoW is inevitably gonna like suck your player base away. So 
I don't, I don't, I don't know. It, 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 it's hard if you want to make a new one. I don't know. Uh, I'm over here laughing in EVE Online. Listen, some people like their spreadsheets. Spreadsheets go to spreadsheet, baby. All right. Yeah. Let's get out of here. All right. Coming up next. There's a bit of a cur- curfuffle about like, yeah, uh. ske- ske- scheduling under Linux and why it bad, but also not bad. And uh, some EA related drama. Fun. Dun, 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 dun. Hello. Maybe you've skipped ahead. I'm not. Pay- they can still see you. Damn it. Um, Pay no attention to the swing behind the curtain. We're going to get into the news, but before that, we are going to shill very shamelessly. Shame, shame, shame. Shame. But before we do that, let's go ahead and thank all the beautiful people making this show possible. Loud, live, independent. Everyone over on Twitch. uh, That's all salty. Throwing out those mad subs. All that fun stuff. Our beautiful patrons making this show. The Wednesday show possible as well. And all the gang of stuff. That we get up to each and every week, including uh, you learned that Vermintide and a not even the mighty 1080 Ti could handle that. No, yes, <laughs> as as it turns out, <laughs> the game's fun, but it runs like a bit of butt. Just a bit, man. Just 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 a smidge, or like Vermin Hind. Am I right? Mm. Ah, ha, ha. Ah, ha, ha. Well, the, 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 those great puns are. Funded by the people who uh, head on over to Linux Game Cat. Oh, I'm going to hmm. dr- drink your tea. No, I'm sorry. That was a keep going. Um, oh, not a, not a stop. Didn't have the right pun. I'm sorry. There. Is that better? There. <laughs> sure. You can head on over to LinuxGameCast.com. Move your mouse over. Oh, my God. It's shocking. Uh, move, move it over the uh, support tab. We got a Patreon. We got LibrePay. We got our store. We'll talk about that a bit in a little bit. We got PayPal. We got our wish lists. I still got to find. I'm still looking for a pair of yoga pants. Like. <laughs> I cannot, like, I may just have to make the joke that, like, listen, I can't even get this thing past my knee. That's how. You, okay. A, I've already ordered my yoga pants. Um, oh, shit. That's going to make this butt pop. Um, I was thinking about that because you're like, well, I can't find any of the fit. And he was like, do you know what Twitch allows? Oh, God. <laughs> what does what is, what is Twitch allow, Ben? It rhymes with body painting. Oh yeah, let's just get oh. like some latex too, so it takes. Oh man, oh man, do you do you, do you want to see my ass pimples? Because this is how you get ass pimples, <laughs> dude. I just say it. All you right, uh, but yeah, but yeah, uh, we we got we got wish lists. If you if you buy some stuff, it's great. You end up on that big shiny reflective wall that's behind Ven. Hey man, that see. is our wall of fine upstanding cannibals. Uh, this is 3.0. There's really not a 1.0. There's 2.0 that will always be permanently attached to any incarnation of the studios. Yeah, if you get anything for the studio, it's the very least we can do. We checked. Um, we did have Carl, Mike, and Basil from last week because we've kind of built this using your help and your support. And it's been kind of awesome what we've been able to pull off. Indeed. We've come uh, a long way, man. It. Re- I mean, look, <laughs> like, once upon a time, this used to be like a crumbling bookshelf. You <laughs> used to, like, just exist in the void. I did. Um, I just had, like, a black sheet hanging from the wall man it's like I yeah like now now, now 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 we're all fancy i got i got a behringer euphoria then has that <laughs> tentacle cabled monstrosity underneath the desk i have a rack yeah yeah if, if, if you want to see a detailed breakdown of it you can also support us via patreon patreon.com slash loose gamecast dude ben i am putting done, some I, of that stuff up man uh yeah okay you, you are because a, that's the shill segment, but the B part is we don't really paywall anything. We do like timed exclusives because, you know, you don't mm. want to be a dick. Plus, one of the points of all of this is to get the education and stop other people from having to reinvent the wheel when it comes to doing some of this nightmare stuff. Because I've ran into too many situations, Jordan, where I was like, Google's, Google's I don't know. Us. Yeah, shrug emojis like, well, okay. At so, the same time, though, I kind I do kind of want to make people record entire shows over again because they only recorded one side of the conversation. Yeah, right. Um, video stuff. Uh, the first podcasting on Linux thing that I put out uh, that is currently available. That'll help you with like leveling audio. The second one will be going live uh, just for the general public, which is uh, like noise removal if you have like humming and you're you're trying to record something you're trying to record your game you're trying to do your audio and you have like me like a uh, ground loop noise 60 hertz hum i'm going to show you like two things that will absolutely fix that that we use here and two things that are really expensive that don't do 
or all man. And the reason yeah. that's out for public, because the third one, this is something I want you to take a look at, baby, is how to do multi-track recording with OBS. Ooh, fancy. Using only Pulse Audio. No fancy hardware. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh, oh fuck indeed. So I, you can uh, just take your voice organ, then you get your game audio. Or if you have two people, that'll be on two separate tracks. So if you fuck something up, you can go back and fix it. Time machine. But yeah, um, get, being a Patreon gets you access to that content pretty early. You can get access to our Discord channel. You get access to the show notes. You can yell at us. Well, before we even go live, you can just make disparaging remarks and we'll <laughs> see them and we'll cry and it'll be hilarious. Um, we got we got a store. Store.linuxgamecast.com. Mm-hmm. You can buy some merch. I want to no thank more, No more Hail Santa. Dude, uh, we sold a few of those. I think like more than one. Fantastic. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah look, can, look at can, that. We, we, we got stickers. I need to buy some coffee mugs. I might just buy some LGC <laughs> coffee mugs just because I only have, I fucking only have this one. Oh yeah, dude. I'm waiting for that thing to drop. I uh, ordered a couple of extra Hell Oaks stickers the other day because I want to put them like somewhere around I, th- I thought you were going to say on Nicolas Cage's nipples. Oh. Damn it. I'll order two more. Um <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's good stuff. <laughs> Curses. Me. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. I started a new thing yesterday. Oh, yeah, that's that's right. Uh, we, we thanks to the Patreon, we do game streams. I do them on Thursdays. Ben does them on Fridays. Pedro did them on would Tuesdays, do them on Tuesdays but he's dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, but yeah, you you, you started uh, Black Mesa, but you're not using the native version. No, man. There, there, there's an interesting reason behind it. There is, and I've hit it in the description that I've uploaded. What, what I'm doing, um. Come check me out, 4.30 Eastern, uh, every Friday, except for the last Friday when we do the um, Jackbox trivia night. We might do some Jeopardy and some stuff like that as well. But when, when Windows 7 Jeopardy? It, no, Windows Phone. <laughs> Windows Phone, yes, it was fucking Windows Phone Jeopardy. <laughs> oh, man. We just wanted to oh. watch the world burn that night, man. But I've never played Half-Life 1. I haven't. And so I'm doing Black Mesa, and I'm having to do it using Proton, so I'm playing it through Proton on Linux using Vulkan because it's got an issue with OBS that they might fix, might not. So, yeah, come yeah. hang out. If we, you want to watch incidentally, that. we ran into it in Portal with Portal 2 yeah. as well. Dude, <clears throat> um, hopefully we'll get around stuff like that with your support because that's the next thing that like part of my 2020 is like I'm finally going to get that Blackmagic 4K thing so I can shut up about it and Pedro and Jordan never have to hear about it again. We're still going to hear about it. Oh, yeah. I'll be like, this thing's really expensive, you guys. I can't believe we spent $500 on a card. That's that's fantastic, Ven. But what do you want on your pizza? Uh, EA permanently banning Linux players in Battlefield 5. Oh, surprise, surprise. My favorite type of pizza, baby. Mm. So this dropped, uh, what, two days ago, according to this. And I saw, you know, uh, Strider, you know him. You love him from Lutris. He... Like even made a post on his Twitter account for that. And he's like, yo, this, this is like a thing that has happened. And I kind of wanted to get very internet-y outraged, but I, I was kind of followed by the, um, really, what the hell did you expect? This, this, this is the CA baby, a hundred percent. Now, Jordan, I, I believe we've said multiple times on multiple occasions, not that anyone listens to us, nor should you. Uh, that's the smart move. It's true. Yeah. Uh, if you're playing a online service through wine, Proton, call it whatever you want. That's Russian roulette. hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Is that, that's, that's just a fair thing to say, man. I, I, and again, it's, it's not, it's not Proton's fault. It's the nope. fact that like anti-cheat software is very, very complicated and it takes into account a number of things. Um, and if it def- figures out that you're not running on a Windows system, it's going to be like, you're a cheater. Mm-hmm. You're going to get banned. Um, and apparently this was EA's response. Cause if you go into the, the forums there, uh, they did get a response. People who are, were banned ostensibly for using proton, uh, the EA automatic email came back and said, well, we reviewed your case and you're a cheating little bitch. So mm-hmm. fuck off. Um, okay. Unpopular opinion. This is something, this is something we've all seen is cause like where this is rolling right now, this one person, no, I think another person jumped in on the Luchas thread. Legitimately, it's like, yo, I got banned. This is the only thing I can think of. And EA's 
100% being full EA mode, die in a fire. We're not going to tell you anything. Deal with it, fucko. Um, yeah. Yeah. That it was like, okay. What I hate every time this happens, because what was, uh, was it Diablo 3? Was that the issue? Or Diablo uh, 2? Yeah, Di- Diablo 3 was getting three. Uh, people banned. Yeah. And, and, they were and that, that, was, that was specifically because. That was, was. That was legit. But initially, they're like, Unpossible. It has nothing to do with Linux. You know, then months later, they're like, it might have a little bit to do with Linux. But what happened was there were legitimate people going, ah, I got banned for Linux, right? Then then the Windows gravy train comes too. Everyone wants to get in on that and cross their fucking fingers. They're like, yeah. I, I got... I- I got banned for Linux and so did my wife. Yeah, exactly. I, I was I was running like seven Linux at the house, man. Totally. That was Linux. Then my favorite thing is when they do it on Reddit and somebody from the company is like, we've reviewed your account. You what, what, And it's always, always like, well, I had to try, right? Yeah. Fuckos. Hate to see that, man. That tsunami. I know. Uh, but uh, it seems like a small issue. Just, just please keep that in mind, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's just danger. It is. Danger, it, was, danger. it was. It was the same thing for Overwatch too. Like, yeah, if you're gonna run this through, uh, it it runs okay via Lutris. Mm-hmm. That's 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 great. But again, it's an online service hosted by a company that has been historically pretty hostile to open source, despite the fact that it runs all their servers and they have internal clients for these games that they just don't release. I think one of the big things is I think everyone knows by now that it's not really going to work right if you see easy anti cheat. Yes. And I think maybe Battlefield Five not having that system in place, and they're like, "But it works, so all's good." Because you're thinking, you know, I'm not hacking anything. I'm just trying to play this damn game. Yeah, and yeah. So just, it, it, it's it's a bit of an unfortunate scenario, right? Because like, oh, it, we're not we're not gonna we're not gonna support your platform. Okay, we have workaround for that. Yeah, fuck uh-huh. you, you're bad. Yeah, and like we don't like that. Boom, and there's nothing you can do with it. I deal with it, citizen. Mm-hmm. But we do have some good news. We get some oh, yeah. good stuff. Indeed, uh, it's been ten. Uh, it's been ten years since Godot was started. Since you looked at me, yeah, you knew that was coming. Deal with it. No, I didn't. But yeah, now, now, now my brain is stuck in bare naked ladies mode. God damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Uh, there, uh, Juan, Juan put out a little bit of, of post saying, just sort of like going over how um, Godot sort of came into an existence. It originally started as a contract gig. Uh, they were they were doing a Portuguese indie game called Dog Bendoja. Um, and they eventually decided to open source the engine. It was originally for like a 2D point and click adventure game Mm -hmm. and it progressed pretty, I don't want to say rapidly because 10 years is a fairly long time in software development terms, but it progressed at a a decent enough clip and now it's becoming a pretty substantially full featured 3D engine soon to have Vulkan support. Um, it's, it's pretty good. Um, I, I would say it is the premier open source game engine. Um, and coming from such humble roots, that's pretty impressive. Send your hate mail to Jordan at linuxgamecast.com. Hi, Tim. I know you're listening. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, so they're, they're saying, uh, 3.2 is going to be released sometime this month, actually. Um, and the cool thing there is that once 3.2 gets released, the Vulcan branch now becomes the master branch Mm -hmm. and they're going to start, um, they're going to start ramping up development to get 4.0 out later this year. Um, they, they go into a little bit of the history there where they're hey, like, yeah, they, we're going to, we're going to do open GLES 3.0. And then no one, no one implemented that properly. So they're like, we got to go back to 2.0. Mm. Well, and Vulcan then, came a long way, man, from initially there, there was a lot of hesitance to like, uh, eh, it's Vulcan thing. We don't know about that to where it's going to be now. They go to also as a patron. So, you know, yes, you're you like, Hey, you're just a bunch of stupid monkeys that make poo jokes on the internet. Go support them with your money. Then yep. that'd be kind of brilliant. Um, yeah. Well, what the fuck was I going to say? Yeah, the, 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 other, the other thing that really worked out for um, Vulcan that uh, Godot really um, harped on was uh, Molten VK, mm. getting getting that metal support through Vulcan. That was kind of the big deal. Um, so, yeah. I, I think it's pretty awesome. And look, at the end of April, 3.1 people searched for Godot. <laughs> that's impressive. <laughs> it really is. No, it, it's it's cool, too, because like, I, I see um, I, I see like a lot of... In- a lot of indie projects are using Godot. I was talking with someone who was like making a beat 'em up as a tie-in game for their web comic, and they're like, "Yeah, we were using SFML, but then we moved to Godot." And I just, I'm like, "I need to hug you now because Godot is great. You should use Godot." It's kind of weird because we we've definitely been covering it all the time to see something that is like, "Oh, this little thing. Oh, nothing. Why does it have a horrible freakish bug as a mascot?" Okay, we've changed that. Um, a week later, <laughs> so you're welcome. And 
where it's at now, man. This is something to focus on. I hope we get to see more traction with this. You know, I, I, it's hard, hard not to walk into the Unity pathway. A little mm-hmm. bit easier not to tangle with Unreal Engine, but give good a look. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. it's 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 free. It, won't, it literally will cost you nothing, and you get the full product. Mm. Um, so Linux sucks at real time. Then tell us why. All the time. Um, we're not slinging this audio uh, over a fiber optic network here in the studio. But nope, gotta wait for it, man. That's um, all over ISDN, right? Uh, like eleven ISDN. Yeah. Nice, dude. Google Stadia port troubles blamed on the Linux kernel schedule because oh, okay. All right, that sounds legit. Uh this is from tomshardware.com. Bad, bad penguin. Yeah. Bad penguin. Bad penguin. Penguin no light. Use me. Use me. Dude. Um this rolls down to millisecond long delays that uh one developer developing for Google Stadia which is running Linux which is going to be using Vulkan was having. So dude went and wrote a blog about it. Which, you know, is like measuring mutexes, spin locks, and how bad the Linux schedule really is. This is a long, <laughs> long slog. And, and, the, and there are a lot of code examples, too. Yay. You gotta do that So I won't blame you if you're just going to rely on us for the summary. <laughs> Dude, uh, this is all about spin locks. And he's like, man, it's just be. Go ahead, Jordan. You, you got a better grip on this than I do. I'm just going <laughs> to. I, I mean, I mean. I don't know if that's true, but here, 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 here it goes. So, uh, so th- this guy, uh, Malta Scarupe, um, he's working on the uh, Stadia port of Rage Two, and he was saying like, "Hey, for uh, for you're, you're seeing a lot of these waits for these mutexes and spin locks, trying to you know create locks on resources." Um, and he compares it with like how uh, Windows does things, and he, the conclusion that he draws is, well. The default that when that Linux is using is insufficient for most games. The default for Windows is sufficient. Therefore, this must be Linux's fault. Um, and there, there, there have been some responses to it. Um, the one Dude. that Ben's going to talk about is from uh, the guy who wrote Adore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Regular Jack. Um, he was like, "Hold my beer, man." Paul Davis, uh, the software we use for multi-track recording on Linux, which this has been in development for twenty years. And, you know, outside of like Paul had to walk in, he's like the best system when it comes to stability and latency for recording audio and music production is Linux. I mean, it beats Windows at BSO SX. But he just, he was like, yo, man, let me tell you something about latency, brother. And he said it just like Randy Macho, man. I don't know. I thought it was uncalled for. That's just how he rolls. But he's like, I, I don't think you know how to use this. And, you know, he's like, Linux handles this just fine. But what it does, and I think this is very, very true, Jordan, is Linux will give you enough rope to shoot yourself in the foot mm-hmm. if you don't understand what you're doing. And yeah, to follow up, you know, Malte, he's like, yeah, this is my first experience with Linux and the schedule as a developer. Then, you know, I, I, I'm continuing to read this. Then I hear honk, honk, choo-choo, motherfuckers. Then Linus shows up. And then shit Oh, out. okay. So, <laughs> li- 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 so uh, be- before we jump onto that, I just want to say uh, Paul- Paul's point effectively boils down to um, there. there is a ton of real-time scheduling uh, support under Linux. Mm-hmm. You just got to use it properly. This guy was getting some permission denied. You need to use a PAM module. You need to set up proper RT... Um, uh, pr- the proper real-time infrastructure. You can't just barge in and expect that the default will do the very specific thing that you want it to do. Linux is he as in his words wears multiple hats, and you're going to need to find the right hat to support your uh, support your work. No, maybe not the red hat because now it's blue. But he needs to be like everyone I see on Twitter and on Reddit. I was like, Linux is stupid. It's broke, and I walked into it not knowing anything about it, using my superior Windows next button clicking. Uh, understanding and grasp of programming and it's Linux's fault. Linux so, sucks. So, so li- li- Linus comes out and he <laughs> says in, in, in this mailing list you can find in our show notes um, what you're, what uh, what Malta is describing is not accurate because, you know, you create a spin lock, you're using CPU time at a random time to schedule or schedule you out and that random time might be after you just read the current time but before you actually release a spin lock and so this creates a bit of a, um, a conflict and he says do not use spin locks in user space unless you really really know what you're doing in fact you shouldn't even use uh you shouldn't even write your own locking mechanisms um you should use the ones that are in place um and then he goes on to say um so 
the the original blog post that uh, Malta wrote basically says, well, I refactor this. Now I'm using a mutex mm -hmm. and all of a sudden now things work. And Linus says, yes, because that is what you were supposed to do in the first place. You shouldn't have tried to implement your own spin locks. Mm -hmm. um, Wasn't so he even like there, there's like decades of research of people way smarter than us about this because it's hard. Yeah. Yeah, he he, he, talk, he talks about like how uh, pessimistic spin locking or pessimistic locking algorithms are very very difficult to implement. Uh, you can we are grossly grossly oversimplifying and glossing over a lot of stuff because like literally I think there's about ten thousand words of explanation in <laughs> right. here on both sides. So you should probably read it for yourself if you want some sort of nuanced understanding. Regardless, this was a bit of drama that popped up this week. It does. And the reason I threw it in is because it has definitely been boiled down and framed as Linux did something wrong, which not the case. No, it's you expected something to work in a certain way mm -hmm. and you were wrong. Right. So Tur turn on the radio. Nah, fuck it. Turn it off. Fear is your only god on the radio. Aim lower. Viet Doom. Doom 2 mod. Uh... I believe this is from the creator of Brutal Doom. So uh, it's a total conversion of Doom inspired by Nam Napalm 98. Rising Storm Vietnam features jungles, reasonably accurate period weapons, and lots of gore, as one might expect. Were, are you a fan of the Doom still? I like Doom, yeah. Huh? Doom, like, like uh, honestly, I'm not the... So OG Doom was a little, little after my time. Um... In the, in, the, in the sense that, like, I had some fairly stricting, strict parenting requirements that basically mm. said no blood and gore, no okay. none, of, none of those sorts. So I, I never, I never played Doom until like a lot later, until I was in my teens. Um, but it's it's fine. Um, it's 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 a classic for a reason, right? And newer games have iterated on it, so yeah, there are better shooters out there. But Doom is still it's it's Doom, right? So yeah, this is this is supposed to be um, inspired by like uh, Napalm '98 and Rising Storm Vietnam. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's, it's basically just what what if, what if Doom, but Vietnam. It it definitely has like a serious not no 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 yeah wait yeah what am I thinking about? in 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 the sense that it's outside yes yeah I mean there's lots of trees and stuff like that. it is a total conversion I don't know when it comes to like retro gaming I I guess because that was I was at the age of like that was the gem like I put hundreds of hours into the original um, Wolfenstein 3D for DOS, mm -hmm. later on Amiga. And same thing with like Doom, did the same thing, but I, I, this is not stuff I go back and revisit. However, I know people, even at my age, this is their jam. They, they get like a new mod, new total conversion, like Empty, Empty's like brutal down, oh, yeah. yeah. And and I mean like, yeah, for, for a game that like, has some pretty low requirements that you can just kind of like, fire up anywhere, like yeah. It's perfect. It's it's perfectly. Would serviceable. you like to play it's it on a refrigerator? Game. Great. Just pair your controller you, with the Bluetooth because you know the fridge you, has got Bluetooth too. I mean, no, dude, you could play it on your TI eighty three calculator, man. Oh, at like yes. at like four frames a second, but like whatever, it's fucking Doom in the classroom. Right. So uh, we got some open source goodness this week, man. Starting with uh, Devolution. Devolution X. Tell me about Devolution it. Devolution X. Yeah, it's uh, open source implementation of the first Diablo game. They just hit one uh, four days ago. Which is pretty cool. They added uh, Nintendo Switch support, OpenBSD support. Um, no and longer kept at 20 actually... hertz, man. Well, okay. To be fair, the game only runs at 640 by 480. So, Come on. yeah. Even on my yeah. Nintendo Switch. Even on your Nintendo Switch, it's going to be upscaled to 720p. Uh. Um, yeah, um, but most most stuff is playable. They've implemented TCP/IP networking, so you can just connect to other people and play. Apparently, Hellfire the mod. So, once upon a time, there was this thing called expansion packs, children, and Diablo had a Diablo had a weird one because Blizzard didn't make the official expansion pack for it. It was Sierra. Sierra got the license to make a um, a Diablo <laughs> one expansion called Hellfire, which dude, I I, I dude, still have the CD for dude. it. Dude, but. You gotta build it on haiku, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, buddy. Well, I mean, that's the thing with these engine implementations. You can build them on whatever. Like, I just like it. it's not that. It's that there's build instructions for it. <laughs> I, you know what? I, well done. Ku ku kudos. Yeah. yeah. It, it it also has some uh, control support. Um, but yeah, uh, one 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 dot one dot oh is out uh, for your perusal. Um, there. Yeah. Apparently, they fixed a bunch of Diablo bugs too. I might actually take this for a spin because I sunk a lot of hours into Diablo. Like Diablo two was objectively better, but like my little 
nostalgia-encrusted blood-pumping organ does a little bit of a flutter when I think back to duping items in Tristram. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, going back to Hellfire, they are they are apparently working on support for it, so I, I'm looking forward to that. It added I one more class, and if you hacked it, you got three more classes. 100% down to definitely tinker with it. Uh, I think it's awesome that you can play around with it on the Switch. That's why I see a lot of attraction being... What I asked, like half jokingly in the notes, is I, I guess a piece of trivia that you know and I knew as well was like almost right up until release. Uh, the game was originally meant to be, I mean, from initial conception, like up to almost being pushed out the door, it was going to be turn based. Yes. Um, but it wasn't. It eventually turned into a real time clicky action RPG that no. spawned your torchlights and your other similar RPGs. Um, but yeah, um, once once upon a time, it was straight up built on the Infinity Engine. Um, that is a thing. So indeed, let's uh, not pull the nostalgia train over. Let's just keep on checking along with some open empires. Boom. Good. Age of Empires Good. Two: Reverse Engineering, doing it the right way, the hard way, the crazy psychopathic way, which is very frighteningly close to our way, only faster. A custom game engine for Age of Empires Two, written in C ninety nine and SDL two. Good on you. Built for fast network play, data, art, sound file are not supplied, so you got to have it. Maybe you can burn a dollar bill on GOG and pick that up. Doesn't require right. much. STL2, you need the true type fonts. The net, you build it. What do we got? Uh, man, pff, make C sort done. Don't have to deal with C make. It's got a server, multi threading. Uh, it's not 100% just yet, though. I know, I know, I know. No. I just talked it no. up 100%, but. No, no, no ranged combat. Not at all. Yeah. So if you're, build, if you're building those archers, it's not going to do jack shit. Yeah, but it, it, it's funny, too, because uh, what do you call it? Age of Empires, um, Age of Empires 2 was on the Steam list for like best multiplayer or whatever. Too. Dude, I love reverse. I mean, this is I, I was looking around because I, I needed to play something a bit older. Get, get some of that retro going on. And I was like, maybe I'll play the original Tomb Raider on Friday. But I this got me going down like the projects that have been reverse engineered. We mm -hmm. need stuff like this game preservation I, and modding absolutely. and continued life of the game itself. Yeah. Um, and, and, and the fact that like the, the, especially for like a lot of arcade games or older consoles, mm -hmm. the hardware that can actually run them is breaking down and no longer exists. Or um, in the case of like Windows games, yeah, this was shit written in assembly for like Windows 95. Good, yeah. good luck getting it working on anything else. Dude. Man, good times. All right, uh, coming up next, we are going to be talking about the best games of 2019, according to three people who wear wizard robes on Saturday and Sunday. Rip. True story. Rest in Pedro. We're going to go over some of the hotness that we found in the decade that was... 2019 because contrary to popular belief jordan we do like some games it happens every once in a every while. now and then and i'm definitely going to say one time in 2019 i think all of us got caught off guard by one particular game maybe two but like i don't what why you have no business being this good yeah why, why why are you fun why am i enjoying myself stop it dude that's definitely a thing man uh so let's go over them starting yeah. mars, mars power, power. yeah this is a this is a fun little puzzle game um what and i think one of like the the most standout things about it is the narrative because like yeah like there's a, there's clearly a story that's happening the only explanation you get is through like these maybe 15 second long little pixely cuts the scenes but it's enough to make you go like okay but then what happens oh i, I there's, then, there's like Lovecraft monsters and like I dude, don't know. Don't don't you feel like this is this falls well definitely fell into the deceptively hard. Yes. Because well, that, that's that's a lot of these puzzle games, but yeah, de de definitely like as it moves on, you're like, okay, this is pretty easy. What the fuck is this? This I How remember I when um, they first sent us keys from Mars, and I looked at it, I was like, oh, it's a three dollar game. You don't expect much for three dollars. Yeah, I was pleasant, pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I, I was very happy with that. But that's just getting started because this bullshit, man. Right. 
Why does why is a match three game this fun? God damn it. This this I wanted I only put this in the original chair acquisition in 2019 because I felt like destroying something beautiful. But this would have to do in its place. Um Runefall, the Chronicle Ruins. It's yeah, it's match three, one hundred percent. It's like, ah, this would be fun. It'll be a throwaway game. And we can say we did a good. We promoted a Linux native game. Currently, what are we at? Nine ninety nine. This is part two, leading to believe there was, in fact, a Runefall 1. Mm. But they did something a little bit different with this one. Because yeah. this 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 category I'm inventing right now is if we had a fuck these types of games, but damn if I didn't spend some time playing it category. Yeah, because okay, uh, yeah, yeah. if I did the mechanic, they did something, man. They did something a little bit novel, at least to me. It was new to me. Mm -hmm. matching three is your movement and you have to get around the map using that. And that got hard, but it was also fun. Yeah. De definitely using like the puzzle solving mechanics as a, um, as like a means of interacting with the game at large. It was definitely something that I didn't expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I I'm, I'm, I'm sure it may have been done, but like, this is my first exposure to it. But yeah, de def definitely like, oh, you just think it's match three? No, you got to match three. But then there are things you got to do to like match three to get to the actual objective of the of the map. And that and that and then that forces you to not only match three. It's like, well, how do I do this now? How do I right. how do I manipulate the board so that I can actually do the thing that I want to do? And then if you throw a time limit on it, then you're just like, uh, oh, shit. That see, fun. that's that's what made me happy with it. I was like, oh, this is like really pissing my brain off. I mean. It, it made me feel good when I was playing it. I remember saying it during the review was that my brain was like, we did work it. And we, I was like, technically, but don't think you're clever. I'm like, okay, fine. Well, what, 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 I think what you call it, like low impact brain exercise or something. It's definitely something like that. Cause you, you, you still have like jump mechanics that you have to use within the map for teleporting. I mean, it, yeah. For what it is for nine quid, I'd definitely say pick that up. But coming up next is, is this our only triple A title? Of 2019, I think technically Life is Strange counts. Okay, but we didn't we didn't play that. What also, all supported by uh, by uh, Feral, developed by Squeenix. Yeah, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition with all the bonus DLC nonsense that you'd have to fork out hundreds of dollars for. Instead, you just have to fork out a hundred dollars for it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, it's it's the final entry in the new Squeenix Tomb Raider series, and it stands on the other previous two games' shoulders pretty well uh you got you got your gruesome lara croft's tests you got a little you have a little bit more exploration in this one which i really liked you got um, so many more outfits yeah you can you can play dress up um which i i admittedly do quite a bit but you <laughs> shut up um but yeah you're you're you're, you're, tr you're trying to save the world from 2012 or i guess this time it's the day after tomorrow <laughs> pick pick your role in an emmerich disaster movie right um but yeah uh very very much in line with the the rest of the games in the series but they're still well done they would have percent are uh this is feral's uh second outing with the vulcan powered croft it's look mm -hmm. it's recommended by us uh to say the newest iteration of Lara Croft Murder Simulator, it's like Pedro's here with us in spirit. This is actually a pretty damn fun game. Uh, big kudos for all for the port and look forward to performance. Uh, three chairs. It did it, it good. was already pretty well performing. Like It was, for, and I know maybe if somebody's watching, like, that game came out in 2018. Not for us, it didn't, Brad. No. A couple of things that makes this Tomb Raider, and to your point, this was like part three of the same damn game. Let's not yeah. kid ourselves. I, I liked it. I really did. But Feral walking into this was really their first uh, time to go up against Proton and DXVK being shipped with Proton mm -hmm. because you could play this game before it was released through Proton at 1080p60. It was doable. Mm -hmm. And you didn't, you know, Proton just made it where you clicked a button and it went and did its thing so uh yep good game yeah i liked it did now uh, i i i enjoyed it for what it is like i i don't, I don't know like I, I never i never like puked rainbows with the new tomb raider games they're perfectly serviceable games mm -hmm. they're they're enjoyable for what they are mm. and yeah we, we get we get, it, it's it's always good when we get some triple a love under i linux, will say this um when this game came out it was released uh the linux port came out when it kind of cocked up 
the kickoff because the regular game disappeared. Yes, they, they, they've been they've been doing that quite a bit. Where like, oh yeah, we got the special edition. Normally, you would expect the regular edition to be cut in price. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's not uh, they, that's not how. It works. Yeah, the new special complete dress up edition was completely on sale for like thirty or forty percent off for the exact same price of what the other one originally was. The one that they took off that you could no the, longer the DLC less edition. Right. Yeah. So you know, for the low low price of the extra money for all the extra shit that you didn't want in the first place. They have since went back and went, we had to try, right? And it wasn't Feral doing that. Right. I, I mean, Feral just puts out the port. Right. Like, Squ- Squeenix is the one who's actually, you know, selling the game. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, it, it did cause an argument because Foxy's like, it's not a Tomb Raider game. And I'm like, it, it fucking says Tomb Raider on the tin. So it's a Tomb Raider game. Anyways. <sighs> it, it, Dick- it, didn't have enough polygons. You couldn't cut it low enough. And he was like, no, there's yeah. too many triangles. In my you, you, you can't cut glass with Lara's boobs. How about dice? Uh, yeah, th- here's, here's a game that Ven despised, but I thought it was pretty good. I didn't uh, Dicey despise Dungeons. despise it. What the hell are you, man? Despised. Hated. Entirely. <gasps> it makes you vomit blood. No, uh, Dicey Dungeons. It's by Terry Kavanaugh. He did Braid. Um, and yeah, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fun little roguelike. Uh, using an interesting dice mechanic. My my big thing with this is I was surprised how like fairly broad and flexible their their dice conflict mechanic is because like with the robot you're you're essentially like trying to you're trying to push your luck with the rogue you're trying to actually roll low numbers with the fight you're trying to roll high numbers uh, with the wizard character or the witch or whatever mm-hmm. you have to um you you basically have to like. You, you, you determine your set of abilities, but you have to unlock them by rolling specific dice and you can work some pretty cool combinations into it. And I thought it was a pretty, it was a pretty rich gameplay mechanic. And, um, as, as far as roguelikes go, a lot, of, a lot of them are just like shmups or they're very basic RPGs. This one, this one did something pretty uh, different and I really liked it. To me, I mean, it was uh, another turn-based type of, I am saying this on behalf of those of you who are like, I don't like turn-based games. I don't either, but I can't just instant hate something. You gotta try it, you gotta get it sample, everything, just in case. This didn't change my mind. It was completely inoffensive though. And I liked the art style and it attempted to laugh a few times. So I think it's fair enough. Yes, plus everyone makes organ uh, or orgasm noises when they talk. It's pretty good. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, something we mentioned earlier though. Yeah, Super Superland. Uh, they recently shipped 100,000 units. We talked about them in the Steam segment. Yeah, <laughs> I, st- I still like this. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, more away. GTA 5 is like, no, fuck you. It's like <laughs> three square feet. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Um, but yeah, um, e- it's really easy to overlook because like, yeah, this if if you were just going based on the visuals alone, you'd be like, oh, this is like another Unity ghetto, mm-hmm. crappy, ill-thought-out puzzle game. As it turns out, it's an Unreal Engine 4 very well thought out puzzle game um, that involves quite a bit of exploration. Okay, except for those little fuckos, man. They're they're just in there to give you something to do while you're so. Yeah, the the, the infinitely spawning enemies are just there to like, yeah, don't stick around here too long. Um, But it it also has a really good sense of humor when you like walk out of the cave and you see like the little red dude crucified and like a little child above you're like, okay, all right, I get this. I get where you're going for game. I dig it. Um, to speak on behalf of Dead Pedro, uh, he wrote Super Games, made some bold claims about their inspiration for this one, but they certainly delivered three cheers. Well earned. Right. Yeah, indeed. And there is a demo uh, if you want to play yeah. with that. It's 20 bucks. I, 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 w- I would say it's worth 20 bucks. It's, it's a solid game. Oh, dude. I mean, it, it, it's literally a sandbox. Yes. Yes. Liter- literally a sandbox. It takes place inside a sandbox. And I think if we, we played it if I put more time into it, it would eventually take a horrible, horrible dark turn. At least I hope it does. Indeed. Love it. Um, up next, we got Pathway. Meh. Pathway was all right. I, I was kind of I was kind of lukewarm about it. Meh. Meh. Because I, I, I don't want to hear the brief overview. So ba- basically, it's um, it's like a FDL style map crawling mechanic, like okay. a, like a point crawl, but with um, XCOM style combat, like top down strategy combat. And I thought that like it, it it was it was okay. It requires a lot more like rationing than a lot of uh, other turn based strategy games do mm-hmm. because you only have the two characters, and if like one dies, then you're basically screwed. Um, 
but the from, from as as sort of a mechanical chassis, it's pr it's it's pretty interesting. I enjoyed it for what it was, but at at the same time, like yeah, I I think I think the I think the grid combat required a little bit more refinement. Maybe adding like a couple more characters. Maybe that's the thing you unlocked later on. I didn't play it enough to get to that point. Mm. But yeah, I mean, I tried it. I put my sixty minutes into it. Bleh. Bleh. Yeah, yeah. Cat broccoli plate. That JPEG. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just not yeah. sure. About that. Then again, I mean, to the game's credit, the it seems the internet as a whole enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I, I think uh, I I actually really like point crawl as sort of like a game pray game game pray fl flame work gameplay framework. English, Jordan. God damn. I look forward to the pa title. Um, Pedro's not here. I have to I have to pick up the slack. Right. <laughs> He's dead. Dead forever. Um, thank, thank you, Mr. Alert. Um, yeah, but uh, point crawls are a pretty interesting gameplay framework. I quite enjoy them from like a tabletop perspective. Mm -hmm. It's cool to sort of see more games playing with that as well. Uh, yeah. And finally, on our Last list, but not least, ba ba Babu Frick. You know, from um, to take the current rating of fuck you because that's why the game from Steven Sausage Roll we do have Baba. Is yes, Baba is wall. Baba is pain, man. Baba is use a puzzle game. Uh, let's see, what did we have to say about it? From Dead Pedro, if there's one thing Vin, Jordan, and Pedro can agree on, it's necro. I mean, uh, it's on puzzle <laughs> games. This one turned out to be pretty damn good. Four very well deserved chairs. The only game of 2019 to receive such a cherry honor. Why? Because, man, I'm a huge fan of games that are smarter than I. And oh, yeah. Not that I made much progress in this, but it's fun knowing that that adventure will always be there. It's like a Netflix original, man. You don't have to watch all of it because where's it going to go? Right? Yeah. I, 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 st I streamed a little bit of this. I think I should get back to it. The, the problem is that the streams get really boring as you just get stuck on puzzles. No, like, no, no, no. See, you're, you're thinking like I do. That's that's what the people are in enjoying like even i was watching you and sandy try to bs your way through that that's what it got interesting when when you could actually you know you were uh telegraphing legitimate despair of like i don't know man uh yeah, yeah there, 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 there's definitely a like a like a schadenfreude effect to watching people play this game mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't it also helps that like the game the game itself is pretty fun especially like give, given the framework you, you think in like oh it's another programming logic style game and then baba is wall and you're like oh okay oh what uh, this is pretty much how it goes down i mean i loaded it up i was like oh, this is, oh look programmer art lovely what's this and yes, like the first map, second map, maybe I maybe in the might have been at the end of the second, beginning of the third map, where it sinks in. You're just like motherfucker. Okay, Ow. that's how we're dancing. Yeah, you just change change the rules. Just do it. Then you're kind of angry because you know that you've already talked some smack about it in your, you know, to yourself. And you're like, no, 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 this dude's fooled me like completely out of the bat. And like, ah, this is a dumb. No, oh great. Not only is this a game smarter than I. Proceeded to talk smack about it. You fooled me twice. Game curse you. Yeah, def definitely. It's 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 a it's a. I I would say like Baba is you is my top recommendation of 2019. Like if would, if you if you have to play one game from this year, Baba. And to its credit, it's 14.99, so it's definitely cheaper than Stephen Sausage Roll. Dev by about half. Yeah. And actually, more entertaining than Stephen Sausage Roll. Um. Stephen Sausage Roll is just unapologetically hard. Dude, that that's that's the present you buy for people that you don't like. Indeed. So, uh it's 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 been 365 odd days. If you had to put a bow on it, mm -hmm. what was what was your favorite game that you played this year? Native and Native and Proton. Native uh has to be mm, Yo Tombs. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, even though I was irritated at having to pay what it did for it, for shit that I've yet to ever touch nor will i because it's a bunch of dlc stuff that i don't care about um yeah that good job with feral with the vulcan i'm down with that but that's the native title if you have to pick if i have to pick and it's not even me picking here's what i did kids i went to steam and i sorted by most hours played 
It wasn't Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider was close. It, it was near the top. There was only one game, old men, then. For 40 hours, then. And that was Neurotic Automatic Tomato. A game which I thought might get 45 minutes out of me. Ended up hollow knighting my ass. Playing <laughs> yeah. through it three fucking times. And enjoying every minute of it. I know it's an older game. It was one of the first games that was released with Proton on their whitelist, which yep. was a lie. It had all types of bugs. It's still got some issues and it's never been updated. But holy fuck, is it a good story? And um, yeah, that's my Proton pick. When, 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 when the robot orgy happened, that's when the game was like, that's when it clicked for me. It's like, <laughs> uh, okay, I actually love this game. Right. Yeah, de definitely for me for the proton. Yeah, um, near near is at that near is at the top of the list. Native wise, though, um, I'm gonna have to go with uh, we didn't we didn't cover it on the show, but I I streamed a little bit of it. Felseal Arbiter's Mark. Which one? I really I really really love Final Fantasy Tactics. It's one of my favorite games. And Squeenix, in their infinite wisdom, has decided. You know what? A lot of people are asking for another Final Fantasy Tactics game, so we're just not gonna make one. And so the Felseal team was like, let's, we'll just make one blackjack and hookers. And it gave me exactly what I wanted out of it. I kind of wanted a few more classes so that you could do more crazy multi-class combinations, but I feel it, it scratched an itch that I really, really needed scratched for a very long time. Oh, what the hell? This has nothing to do with amphibious sea life or singer. I mean, later, later on, someone does get kissed by a rose on the plane. Oh uh, no no no! Yep, yeah. nope. Tap the joke button on that. Yep. Yeah, Grids. like like I like like I said, there is a there is a very specific reason why I picked this game, and it is because and it is an entirely personal reason. Yeah, Pe um, people if, love it though. Yeah, if if you like Final Fantasy Tactics, you will like Felsial Arbiter's Mark. Is this the story those, is a little uh, meh. rare rare occasions when somebody sets out a team sets out to do something, they fucking stick the landing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. It, it 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 is Final Fantasy Tactics, and I'm I'm quite happy for it. <sighs> All right, man. So I'm I'm, I'm going to close this out, baby. Do it, because we we have to conclude. I have too much. I'm to about to conclude. Oh my god. Uh, this button thus concludes the games we kind of sort of like 2019 share award presentation showcase Expo Gala Extravaganza blowout. Well, you know, we, 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 we made some judgment calls. We made some um, we made some bold claims. Maybe, maybe, maybe you disagreed with them. I don't know. No. Only. No. Everyone always agrees with us. But Jordan, check this out, man. If they did disagree with us, could they be like, yo, I'd like to tell you in more than 120 characters, whatever is it, 260 characters? Two, 240 characters 240, on Twitter now. I think yeah. it's like 300 characters on Mastodon. We don't check that. Yeah, you can head on over to uh, you can head on over to LinuxGameCast.com. We got a we got a we got a contact thing. Um, contact us. Yeah, you just pick pick a show if you want to talk about this one. Click select LGC Weekly. If you want to talk about the Wednesday show? You can click uh, Weekly Daily Wednesday. Uh, if you want to request a review, yeah, send us some keys, buddy. Send us three keys. No, nope. uh, a .gz. Well, you'd have to send it separately. Send us a I'm link to your, you your one Dropbox key for Windows game. Well, <laughs> you know we, you know we probably could do family sharing, oh. but you should give us three keys, or else we're gonna make fun of you. Um, and if you uh, copy your paste, uh, copy paste uh, press release release press containing release. a bunch of hyperlinks. It's a press release. It's when you leak it's a press to the leak. press. No, yeah. just, it's a vegetable. I'm into that. Sounds delicious. Uh, yeah, our press. spam golem will devour it and yes. try to eat your babies. Uh, so, so if you want to send us a press release, show at linuxgamecast.com. Um, we don't have any. We don't have any. Uh, we do. Email. Okay. I'm We're, sandbagging, but this is the holidays. We did a little special thing. You know, it's just me and you like the old times, you know, just making out and all that fun stuff. And, you know, we wanted to wrap up the 2019 games we liked, stuff that's on a curator list. Go check that out. That's the thing, man. If you yeah, who's who's going to update it now? Now that Pedro's dead. So uh, probably Ghost Pedro. Na, 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 na. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And then, boom, so. Ghost Beautiful Napa. people, thanks for showing up live, man. It's been a while since we've done something like this. A little bit different, a little bit special. And uh, you rode this nightmare train all the way back in. 
to the station. If you want in touch with me, just at Vin Stone. On Twitter, I'm there. I'm being sexy, being beautiful, but not being intelligent. Yeah, you, you can't find me in the white room with black curtains near the station, but you can find me on Twitter at The Burning Fool or on our Mastodon at Frojo. It's mass.lungschemecast.com. That's the URL you should go to or at your federated timeline or whatever. I'm Jordan Smung, in case you didn't know, because my name was at the bottom, but now it's not. And Pedro's dead. Credits. Rip, rip, rip in Pedro. Not responsible for brick devices, dead SD cards. What about the dead SD cards that are causing your switches to explode? Oh, That's yeah, I saw that. They were like, LOL, not our pro. Oh, we better fix it. The internet found out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we got to thank our executive producers like Arthur and Mr. Foxdog, MT, the Atomic Gas, Mike G, Barbara, Aldis, Hoplo, Mac Geek, and Scott. Scoots. And we got all our lovely, not regular horse producers who aren't unicorns. They're super like, horse producers. Super horse. They're just not horny. Simcha. Scott, like another, another Scott. Another Scott. <laughs> Bram. <laughs> yeah, we got Jolly, Jolly, Pablo, Pablo Stanfish, Newman, Luke, Zoe, Massavoni, Wintercell, Sherevik von Havenstaben, Sorceress, uh, Kyle Linux Cast, Nova, Bram, Carl, Nova Brock, Jay. James. Do, do we, we got a fuckwall this time? No, fuckwall. Get fuck, fuckwall members. Five dudes. <laughs>